Hello, BookTube. This is a bookshelf tour. Um, book shelf, uh, bookcase, excuse me, number 14, shelf one. It's a mix. Um, it's from an upstairs bookcase. Uh, everybody's at school or work, and today's a day off for me, so I can do this downstairs where it's a little more comfortable and hopefully the lighting's better. So it's going to be a mix of historical fiction, um, thrillers, um, detective stuff. The whole bookcase is like that. Um, so let's just get started. First off, we hear The Adventure of the Stalwart Companions, edited and annotated by H. Paul Jeffers. Heretofore unpublished letters and papers concerning a singular collaboration between Theodore Roosevelt and Sherlock Holmes. And I love these sort of uh, Holmes type stories. This is a Joan Kahn book, excuse me. And Harper and Row Publishers, New York. And this came out, it's a first edition from 1978. So a Sherlock Holmes type story. Then Another mystery, Fear is the Same by Carter Dixon. Hopefully a little bit of glare on that because it's got the Mylar cover. There he is. This is William Morrow and Company from 1956. Sort of a classic mystery. Then... Nelson DeMille. You can see I'm going to be fighting glare today for some reason. And it's Nightfall, a novel. And that one's from 2004. Let's see if we can get a picture of him. There he is. So at dusk on July 17, 1996, on a deserted Long Island beach, a man and a woman engage in adulterous sex in front of a video camera. Suddenly, a terrible blast lights up the dark summer sky. TWA Flight 800 has just exploded in midair with 230 souls on board, and the video camera has recorded the last moments of the doomed airliner. Five years later, the government has declared the crash a result of mechanical failure. But John Corey, an ex-NYPD detective who is now a contract agent with the Federal Anti-Terrorist Task Force, is persuaded by Kate Medfield, Mayfield, excuse me, his wife and task force partner, that the case deserves a second look. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've, I've enjoyed several of his books. Here's a, I used to have a bunch of these. Um, I, I don't know anymore, I keep giving them away, but that's Bartholomew Gill. And this is The Death of an Irish Sea Wolf, which is a Peter McGarr mystery. And these are fun. These are real fun. Um, let's see here. 50 years ago, Clement Ford first appeared on Clare Island, a remote community off the west coast of Ireland. Now, well into old age, he still re uh, retains the physical stature and quiet authority that earned him the nickname Sea Wolf. Ford has always lived the simple life, but rumors abound that he is uh, fabulously wealthy and the anonymous source of the Clare Island Trust, the philanthropic fund that has done so much to improve the lot of the islanders. One night a schooner pulls into harbor carrying a figure from Clement Ford's past and the tranquil life of the island is shattered. By morning, three people are dead. Clement Ford is missing and Chief Superintendent Peter McCarr is on the case. And the... These Peter McGar mysteries are really good. William Morrill Company, New York, in this case, 1996. And then moving right along, The Last Gondola, A Mystery of Venice, by Edward Sklepowicz. I'm getting the glare. These Mylar covers are taking a beating in this video. And this is... Uh, Thomas Dunn book, St. Martin's Minotaur, New York, and that came out in 2003, so it's a mystery that takes place in Venice. I remember it being good. Uh, I read it a while back. Here's a, a Martin Cruz Smith, Polar Star, the sequel to Gorky Park. 
And oddly enough, I don't have Gorky Park. That's a rather well known mystery. Let's see here. Nice, stylish title page here. This is from 1989 and it was, uh, let's see. Soviet factory ship makes its way through fog of the Bering Sea off Alaska. Battered, streaked with rust, carrying a crew of 350 of them women. The Polar Star is virtually a Soviet village in American waters, but its satellites are American trawlers that catch the fish. The Soviets clean, freeze, and carry the harvest home. The last net of the night bears pollock, cod, crabs, and from the depths of the sea, the body of a woman missing from the polar star. Sort of interesting name for the ship because the Coast Guard had, I don't know if they still do, they had two icebreakers. One was Polar Sea and one was uh, Polar Star, I believe. <coughs> Different polar. Then here's some books that are quite a bit older that I really, really always enjoyed. Uh, Mary Renault, Fire from Heaven, No Dust Jacket. Um, little end papers there. Pantheon Books, New York, 1969. Keeping right up with that series. This one does have a dust jacket. Marion Alt, uh, The Mask of Apollo. These are all historical fiction. This one came out in. The pages go on here. Again, Pantheon Books, uh, Random House, New York. This is from. This is the second printing of 1966. Look at that price. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, Five ninety-five. In her masterful new novel set in Greece of the fourth century BC, Mary Renault tells the story of the actor Nikoritos. Um, through the eyes of this warm, sympathetic, and living character, we experience the war-weary, self-searching world of his time. Always, uh, always on his uh, self, uh, let me see. Always on his travels, Nico, the tragedian takes with him an antique mask of Apollo, a relic of the theater's golden age, which from being his mascot becomes by degrees his artistic conscience. So, I, I always loved that. It's been a long time since I've read these. Then another Marion Alt, and again, a copy where something happened to the dust jacket. King Must Die, Pantheon, uh, 1958. And let's see here. We got one more. The Bull from the Sea, Marion Alt. And papers. Pantheon Books again. This is the third printing of 1962. This is the story of Theseus, King of Athens. The book opens with his triumphant return from Crete after slaying the Minotaur to mount the throne left empty by the death of his father, Aegis. The youth of Theseus was a subject of The King Must Die, one of the most highly praised novels of recent years. Now, from many classical myths and legends that surround his later career, Miss Renault has reconstructed the heroic exploits of Theseus the King. Then we'll move away from that type of historical thing for a minute. Um, this is Randy Wayne White, and this is the novel that introduced Hannah Smith, and it's a autographed copy from Costco. Um, some friends of mine said it, sent it to me. That's why I'm covering this up here. Uh, it actually has pictures they sent too with it. Um, it's signed by the author. And uh, gone, Randy Wayne White, G.P. Putnam Sons, New York. And this is uh, from, holy smokes, what a, 2012. So these take place down in Florida. 
I had real big fan. I like these. I'm a big fan of the Doc Ford novels. Then here's another one with a Mylar cover, so we'll see how it looks. The Sapphire Sea by John B. Robinson. And this is also signed. Uh, William Morrow, 2003. Plagued by a bitter divorce and an overbearing father, Lonnie Cushman has fled his old life trading high-quality gems and attending society balls in New York City to scout the lawless sapphire fields of northern Madagascar. Homesick and lonely, he dreams of finding the perfect stone that will allow him to establish an independent career on West 47th Street and renew his relationship with his seven-year-old daughter. But when he finally unearths the greatest sapphire discovered in the last hundred years, the power brokers of Diego Suarez want him dead. Then we'll go back to historical fiction. I don't even know if I have these in order, but here we go. Colleen McCullough, The First Man in Rome, a novel. And this is a paper edition. Uh, this is a uh, Harper Collins of Publishers, uh, the trade paperback, uh, it's from 2008, the book came out in 2001. When the world uh, cowered before the legions of Rome, two extraordinary men dreamed of personal glory. The military genius and wealthy rural upstart Marius and Sulla, penniless and debauched but full of um, aristocratic birth. Uh, men of exceptional courage cunning and ruthless ambition separately they face the young formidable opposition of powerful <coughs> excuse me and vindictive foes and then a couple more of them uh, Colleen McCullough the grass uh, grass crown and papers uh, William Morrow and Company New York I think this one follows in order the uh, the first one there. And then we have Fortune's Favorites. Again, with no dust jacket. There's the end papers there. It's a Roman Near East. So it's First Man in Rome, The Grass Crown, and then Fortune's Favorites here. And this is from 1993. And moving right along, we got the blue, the blue wolf, Frederick Guillaume. The epic tale of Genghis Khan and the Empire of the Steps. And this was uh, Thomas Dunn book, St. Martin Press, New York, translated by Will Hobson. And it's from um, uh, 19, uh, 1998 was when it was written, and then 2001 is the translation. So here you go. This was a good story. If you like historical fiction, it's really good. And then... We've got a couple of these Ben Cain novels. We get uh, The Road to Rome, a novel of the Forgotten Legion. And this one is uh, 2010. There's a map showing where the action takes place. Um, actually, this one here is from before it. This is The Silver Eagle, a novel of the Forgotten Legion by Ben Cain. So I'm missing the first one. I don't think I ever had it. They read fine without without having the first one. This one is uh, St. Martin's Press, uh, St. Martin's Griffin, New York, uh, 2009, so a year earlier. Uh, I don't know. I've never read the first one. So that was the first shelf of the uh, 14th bookcase. Thank you, BookTube.